thank you all for coming and welcome. And uh, today and this morning, we're going to be hearing from Al Sagala from Mount Hood Community College. He is the executive director of the Mount Hood Community College Foundation. And I'm going to let him take over now. Thank you. And thank you, a big thank you to the League of Women Voters for making this possibility. Um, Mount Hood Community College is working on its 50th anniversary as we speak. That's 50 years of celebrating higher education in our community. Our celebration will begin in 2016. So it was in 1966 that the college first held its first class on what was the old county fairgrounds, in fact, before moving to its current site and offering classes in uh, portable units so it's a great history that we want to continue to celebrate because we've often referred to the college as the jewel of East County. And we want to work to continue to make it the jewel of East County. During these past 50 years, we have provided education not only to our college students, but also to our high school students in programs in partnership with our local high schools and also to our young children through the uh, Child Development Center that is available on the college. Offering child care to, to those who need someone to help out as they grow to watch their children and also training those child care providers at the college. So it's a huge spectrum of people that we actually serve from those children to those high school students to those college students and to our adult learners. One of the most important, I think, aspects of the college is workforce training. What are we doing to prepare the workforce of tomorrow, which turns into the future of our community? Partnering with such agencies as Boeing or Leatherman, huge companies within our district that we are able to partner with and to help in training their their workforce. But it's not just the technical side, whether it's uh, machine tool technology, it's also automotive side, it's also training the mechanics of tomorrow, who's going to repair your car, because nowadays we as individuals <laughs> maybe can change our oil, but when it comes to a computer, computerized system, the technology is totally different. So that's what those students are, are training on. And it's also on the nursing side, having the brooding center and training those future care workers of tomorrow and making sure that we have that workforce that's ready to deal with those of us who are getting near to retirement age or are in retirement age. And we all know that the baby boomers, it's going to be a huge population that enters this area and already has entered this area in which we have not only the support, but those trained, uh, those trained individuals who are going to help us as we, as we grow as individuals. So with the 50th anniversary coming up, we've started the stage of organizing what's going to happen in 2016. We're partnering with the community because, as I said, this is the college is the jewel of East County. So making sure that the community is involved, making sure that the history is shared, making sure that we look at this not only as a time to look back, but a time to look towards the next 50 years of our college. Not only have we been a major workforce educator, but we have been a great partner with the community in envisioning the future of this area. Some of the stuff or some of the things that we're looking at at this point include everything from how we partner with our current businesses to grow their businesses, but also how we partner with city and county and state entities in growing the economic development of our area. Are we going to increase or add max light rail to continue through the area is a discussion. Whether that happens, again, it's in the discussion phase, how we can improve that. 
accessibility to the entire part of, of East County. One of the challenges that um, the college is facing is probably no secret or no news to many of you who have followed the college, and that's the facility. As I say, 50 years of being here, the facility has changed a little, when in fact we face some bigger changes that need to be done in taking care of the facility, first of all. How do we take care of that facility has been a challenge for this institution. Um, as many of you know, the institution has gone out for several times to try and get uh, general obligation bonds passed to, to help address this problem of leaky roofs, of getting it seismically up to date, taking care of asbestos, taking care of our classrooms in general. So we have started the discussion on, again, seeking voters' help in getting this addressed. Um, the college has been able to piecemeal some of what needs to be done. So if you look at the current roof, it's been patchworked <laughs> because that's where we're at with funding with the institution. So the board has directed us to look at the possibility of going to voters and making a request to assist in taking care of what is the community's facility and taking care of what needs to be done. Big example is uh, this past, I, I believe it was this past year, where we had the electrical system basically blow up. The main transformers for the institution finally gave away. The college had to shut down because the power was unavailable. This was the main source of power. It took a while for them to bring in a new uh, system that cost over a million dollars. Fortunately, with the planning that was being done and the planning that should be done is that you have a reserve or you should build up a reserve to take care of those emergency situations. Without power, we cannot operate. Without power, we cannot live. So that's where the money came from at that time. What happened with our, with our reserve fund? It goes down to this. So what happens if we have another emergency that faces the institution? And that's why the board has directed the administration to look at what are the possibilities? How are we going to deal with this facility's aging situation? Should we go out to voters? What are voters feeling about us at this time? So it, it's, it's a decision that's, that's taken seriously and will take time to produce an answer. But I do want us to, to think about that as individuals on what needs to be done for our college, what needs to be done to make sure that the facility is safe, the facility is, is being able to continue to provide the education that it needs to, that we don't have to deal with leaky roofs, that we take care of that seismic situation, that we look at the infrastructure as a whole, uh, everything from the water pipes to the conduits that are running our, our electrical system. So it's a big decision, but it is also something that we really, really have to address. And when I say we, I'm talking about not only the college, but the community as well. Some of the offerings of the college, as I mentioned, touched a, a bit about earlier, not only workforce, but preparing our students to go on towards the, to the university. The college has been able to establish many relationships with our local universities to guarantee that when a student comes to us as a transfer student, meaning that they're gonna transfer to university and get their four-year degree, or master's or doctorate, that we make that as simple as possible. They're gonna to come to us, and guess what? They're gonna be not only enrolled at Mount Hood, but enrolled at Eastern Oregon University, or enrolled at Portland State University. So they have that dual enrollment possibility, and it makes it seamless for them. When I, when I was growing up, I had to, okay, I started at the community college, which 
That's why I'm here, because I have it deep in my heart. So I started at Mesa Community College. After my two years, I then had to apply at the university, which was a whole other step at that time. Well, now we try and make it as seamless as possible. When you're enrolling in Mount Hood, you're also enrolling at the university of your choice. And it takes a big load off of a student when they're ready to move on. And they can also take those classes here at Mount Hood Community College as well. So we've had numerous students who have received their bachelor's degree while staying here in our community from Eastern Oregon University. So they get their bachelor's degree from Eastern Oregon University and they never left our campus. So it's especially important when you think about some of our student situations. Um, we serve a very, how do I want to put it, mature student body, meaning that a lot, of our, a lot of our students are folks who have decided to come back and retool themselves and get their degrees. They've been working. They're not out of high school. They've been out for a while. Now they go back and say, I want to actually fulfill my dream of being whatever their goal is, and we're there for them. Well, if I want to get a four-year degree, here's where I live, here's where my kids are. Now I don't have to worry about moving everybody to Eastern Oregon and getting my degree with EOU. I can stay here, I stay in place, and I get my four-year degree. So it's a beautiful relationship. It's a win-win for the student, it's a win-win for Mount Hood, and it's a win-win for the universities as well. Um, when the student is attending and taking those Eastern Oregon classes, they are an Eastern Oregon student. But the class is held here. It's not necessarily at the university. And then when graduation time comes, the Mount Hood Community College graduation ceremony includes those bachelor degree graduates. And then they have the opportunity, if they want, to go to their university and experience the graduation there as well. And I tell you, one of the most beautiful experiences for me is to be at graduation because you get to see the accomplishments there are made. You get to see the families that are celebrating the accomplishment that that student has made. And for many students, it's, it's an accomplishment that they maybe had not seen as possible. And if it wasn't for that community college system, maybe they couldn't have had that dream come true. And I'm an example of that. As a high school student, I did not have the grades to readily be accepted into a university. So the community college gave me that possibility. Because when you sign up as a community college student, we don't ask a GPA requirement. You don't have to be a 4.0 or 3.5. You come in and we're going to accept you with open arms and say, we're willing to be here for you and assist you in your educational goals and help you work towards that degree. And that's what, I was one of those students, as I said. You know, I didn't have that high GPA, so I couldn't, get, and I'm from Arizona, so I couldn't get into Arizona State University or University of Arizona or Northern Arizona University. That's actually my all my mater, alma mater. But Mesa Community College gave me that opportunity. The community college system gives students, all students, that opportunity to achieve those goals as long as you want to achieve those goals. Nothing's impossible. And it's really the gateway to higher education for many of those uh, who might be in a similar situation as I was, or for those folks who are coming back and saying, I want to, again, as I say, make my dream come true. I want to be involved in a certain career. I want a career. So I go to the community college. And then if I want to transfer to university, that's totally the possibility. One of the great programs that we have, to give you an idea of how we 
offer a variety of different programs to assist students. The program's called Transitions, and I'm sure some of you have heard of that. That one's true to my heart as well. Transitions works with women who, in most cases, um, obviously have a family, but may find themselves as a single mom. And now they're suddenly in a situation where they have to be the care provider of the family. Not, they, not that they haven't been that person, but now they have an even much more enormous load on their shoulders of having to be that money maker to take care of the family. So transitions help, helps them transition into another life, a life of support, a life of dealing with maybe emotionally what you've had to deal with to help guide you through the educational process, to help support you as you begin to build a career which you hadn't done before. It can be pretty traumatic, obviously, for a, a mom to be put in that situation. Sometimes abuse is involved, sometimes there are other challenges to deal with. But having a group like Transitions in which the women are of similar backgrounds can sit down and talk. And along with them supporting each other, then you have the faculty. You have those other program directors who are going to help guide you to get your education. One of the best programs, I think, that we offer at the college, and, there, and I'm glad to say there are a lot of them. So again, I go back from childhood through adulthood. That's the service area for community college. We're not just going to concentrate on high school graduates. We're not just going to concentrate on ex extended degrees or university students, those who want to go to the university. We're going to do what the community needs. And that's the, the blessing of a community college. And I often say this, and it's not new, but community is our middle name. And so we strive to live community, to hear from community, and make sure that what we're offering is what the community needs, whether it's through partnerships, again, with our, our, corporate, uh, our corporations within the district, whether it's partnerships with the high schools, and in general, partners with our, partnerships with our city and county and state governments to accomplish the goals that, that need to be accomplished. Uh, continuously studying what's being done, continuously looking at what needs to be done is very important in a part of our system. So I want to thank you for, for having this uh, possibility, for allowing me to share a little bit about Mount Hood Community College. Uh, I encourage anyone who is interested in the college to look us up on the web, web mhcc.com edu and visit our website. Feel free to call anyone at the college. Um, we're here for you. We're here to help you succeed and we're here to listen. So again, special thanks to the League of Women Voters for, for your support and your, your guidance in making this possible. I want to thank you for stepping in on such short notice for the president of the college who was called away to Washington, Washington DC to share her vision what she wants to do with Mount Hood and what she has done with other colleges. And I think we want to let people know in the community what a wonderful asset we have with the college. And uh, so I think we should all be so proud. And now I want to thank you again. And uh, now we're going to have a few questions from our audience here. Great, thank you. Would you elaborate a little more on the transitions program uh, about maybe some of the background of some of the women or the ages of the women involved and and how it has helped them and they've gone on, you know, to to reach their goals? You know, one of our success stories is a young lady from our community here 
in Gresham who entered that program. And she now has her doctorate. And she spends a lot of her time as a consultant and traveling across the country and talking about these types of issues, the types of issues that, that uh, uh, a single mom face. She talks about homelessness because that's something that she experienced. So she blossomed, I mean, to the extent of, of greatness because she's known across the country. And it's those types of examples that make you really, really see how a person can, with the guidance and the assistance of others, be their dream, become what they want to become, and be the person that they want to be, despite the challenges that she faced, despite homelessness, despite having to raise kids by herself. That's not easy, we know. It's not easy doing it as a couple either. <laughs> but for one person to face those challenges and then to grab the opportunity that is available to grow and to take it and to make it a mission, not just a career, but a mission for her. So the women come from a variety of backgrounds, um, a variety of ages. They, again, as I say, have similar backgrounds, and I repeat, single moms um, facing adversity of some type, whether it's maybe homelessness at one point or abuse, big problems and a challenge to deal with without the right people to help you with in many instances. So having that, that group who share those common experiences talk about it, for them to work out those inner demons at times that may continue to haunt and to break out from that shell and to blossom into doing what they want to do, having the career that they want to have. That is transitions. And there's also um, a program called Transiciones, which is concentrates on Spanish-speaking women doing the same thing. So you here have the Spanish-speaking women who, are fa who have faced the same situations and are now working towards their, their college degrees. Great programs. There are so many students from, that are coming from high school and, of course, others that are out working that really are not college material. Yes. They need training. So how many programs are available anymore? I keep hearing about all the programs that aren't available. So what is available for the technical training? Yeah. When you look at um, what can a student do without a high school degree, I think that's part of your question. A more college degree. Everybody says, well, oh, they need to go to college. Well, right. they need some training of some type. But what types of training are available? And students who don't necessarily get their high school degree can work, work with the college in obtaining that equivalent, whether it's a GED or working at getting back into school, whatever their possibilities are. There are numerous type, numerous type of technical programs that we offer at Mount Hood Community College. Um, whether you're looking at machine tool technology, those are the types of jobs that maybe you're going to look at in working at a company like Leatherman or, or, or Boeing. Whether you're looking at nursing, a two-year degree, um, I talked a little bit about uh, automotive technology. These are partnerships that not only I should say programs that not only offer the education, the training needed, but also through our partnerships, hopefully produce that conduit in which those students are being hired by those companies, those local companies. Um, the Ford Asset Program is in partnership not only with Ford, the bigger company, but your local Ford dealerships as well. Um, when you look at engineering, what are we doing with our students at this level to encourage them 
to become those engineers of tomorrow. That's another challenge that the state continues to face is that we're not producing enough engineers. Now, engineers is a four-year degree, but still we're working with students to try and guide them to where they want to go. And if they want to be those engineers of tomorrow, let's make sure that they're guided right towards those jobs. Um, dental hygiene is another program, two-year program. Who are those future dental hygienists out there? Who, who are we partnering with to make sure that, that uh, private companies know, here's your workforce right now being trained? Um, there are several different engineer um, possibilities that are available that a student can look at as well. And some of those are two-year degrees, depending on what level they want to they get to. Uh, we have communications, uh, students who are in their our radio and television programs who have been working in local TV stations here in town, graduates from Mount Hood and now working in the business of television or radio. So there are a lot of different, and I think if, if I remember the numbers around 60 of, of professional technical programs that gives them a wide variety to choose from. So a student who is interested in maybe not looking towards a four-year degree, but is looking for you know, job training to where they can work within two years in that workforce, should take a look at our website, look at those possibilities, they're there, and take advantage of those possibilities. One thing that I haven't mentioned is I'm the executive director of the foundation. The foundation is key to supporting students and classroom technology. Our whole goal as a foundation is to raise the funds needed to help those students get scholarships and the financial support that they may need to pay for their education. Also, it's in establishing those corporate uh, partnerships in which maybe the corporation is helping us in getting the right tools in the classroom. Another example is the Ford program. Ford provides the automobiles, the latest automobiles with the latest computer systems as gifts so that students can learn what they need to know about these, these automobiles. So we don't have to buy a new car. <laughs> Ford gives us that, Chrysler gives us that, uh, Honda gives us that. Um, so getting back to your question, it's in the, in the area of 60 or so programs that are looking at training a workforce within a year or two. So those are some of the possibilities. But are there any limitations or restrictions for admission to Mount Hood? Uh, no. Um, Is there an age restriction? No, no. We offer, we offer classes, and we often have used the term lifelong learners. And that's a fact. Yeah, because despite what level you are in your education, doesn't mean that your learning stops or that you want to stop learning. If I want to learn more about a certain software program, I have that ability to go to the college and learn that. If I have had a dream to learn pottery making, I can go to the college and learn that. And so this, there is no age requirement. Well, if you're 10 years old, you can still possibly take a class. In fact, I tell you, we, I, I have, we have had that, in which the, the students were uh, homeschooled. I remember this, about five years ago, we had a, a brother and sister who were homeschooled, middle school aged, and they were taking college classes because what it takes is the parent to first of all say they're ready we will do what we call a, a placement exam to see where they're at with their mathematics abilities, their science, and so forth, to make sure that they're ready for college classes. And guess what they were? So they were there with the rest of the college students. Uh, these two younger 
students, <laughs> you know, again, middle school age, and working on their higher education. It's just amazing. So, no. <laughs> That's great. Yes, it is great. And the beauty of, again, the beauty of the community college system. You mentioned an arrangement with Eastern Oregon. Do you have that with any of the other universities? Yes, Eastern Oregon, uh, Portland State, um, Oregon State, OIT, Oregon Institute of Technology, and I know I'm missing some, but, the, but just about with every university in the state, as well as with uh, universities in Washington. Well, another question about transitions. Yes. Uh, you mentioned the, the Spanish, Hispanic uh, community. Spanish how, community. How do you reach out to those women who, who may not even speak English? Uh, uh, how, how do they become aware of this program, and, and how, do you, how do you teach them? How do you take them and teach them? Yeah. First, you have to have that line of communication possibility. In other words, if you don't have the staff that speak that language, then you can't. It's pretty hard. <laughs> so that's part of our challenge and making sure that we can do that. What's great about programs like Transiciones is that word of mouth seems to be very successful. Because once a, a group hears or a person hears about this, and here's how the college is assisting them. It spreads, fortunately. So we also work with different um, faith organizations to get the word out as well. And with other uh, women groups across the county uh, in partnering with them. Uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not too, um, what am I looking for? It, it's actually pretty often that we work with those social agencies, not only to get the word out, but to make sure that our students know what's available to them. That's the other part of Transiciones. If we have a student who is facing certain challenges, we're not just going to say, good luck. <laughs> we will connect them with the proper agency that maybe can assist them in dealing with that challenge. And, and so that's why keeping a close uh, partnership with the county community services or the city's services is, is very important with that type of program. And in general, with all students. Needing to get people out onto the college campus uh, so they, the public can see the needs. Uh, so many of the uh, organizations or the theater groups in that have been kind of turned away with the cost of having anything on campus. So people aren't going as much as they used to. How do, how do you propose getting people there to see what the problems are so that we can get the bonds passed? Thank you for bringing that up because this is one of the issues on the top of my list. And with our fairly new president, Dr. Deborah Durr, in office, it is a priority. We are looking at uh, changes that had been named, that, that, that had been made in some of our guidelines in facility usage that we are saying, why did you do that? <laughs> because, for example, there is, there used to be, and then they changed it, nonprofits got a discount, okay? It's not there anymore. Well, it will be. Partners of the college, in partnership with the college, you can use our facility. We're gonna change that to make it happen again. So that getting organizations, getting like the League of Women Voters who may wanna use our facility for different activities or meetings or in partnership with us, you can use that facility. And there's not going to be a charge for that because it's the community's facility. The community has been paying for that facility. And we're not going to close the doors to those who can't come up with extra cash. That's not what the community college is about. We're looking at how we can partner with our corporate partners in supporting that facility. Um, some of our fundraising efforts may soon see the possibility of naming departments, programs, 
after a supporter. And that's how we can increase some of our revenues, which would go towards students or to that program. We have a beautiful gymnasium, huge gymnasium, that we need to capitalize on much more in making it the community event center. We have a beautiful football field, which is thankfully used by some of our high schools, because we don't have a football team, as you all know. What a great venue that is for community possibilities. Highland Games continues to be a great partner, which is an excellent partner. What else are we going to do in the future to make that facility the event center of our area? And that's part of my goal as the execu executive director of the foundation, is to bring those possibilities to see what we can do together as a community, to bring the arts, to bring those types of activities that are going to be enriching for everyone. So everything from a cultural activity to maybe even a concert. What an old idea, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I was so disappointed when Mount Hood Repertory Theater had to disband because they couldn't use the facility. Uh, we have the Nuts and Bolts Theater out in Boring that would love to have a place to perform. We go to the Clackamas Repertory Theater out at Clackamas Community College, and the college is in working with the theater. Uh, it's a beautiful facility, but they're using the students, they're teaching the students, Oh, I wish Mount Hood would do the same thing. We are going to. Good. We are going to. We need it desperately. And I would like you to be a part of that because you come, you come to us, to me, and you bring me those ideas and we will make them happen. This, this college is your college and we're not going to... <laughs> We're not going to keep you from using that facility because it is your facility. It is not only a great educational facility, as I said, it is a community center and we're going to do our best to make sure that it stays like that. And I want to just say thank you to Al Sagala. He has always been there for me personally, but also for League of Women Voters. While he was working there, you could go there and get any answer you wanted, and I've always appreciated it. It's been lacking, so glad Thank you're back. You. Thank you. Um, I recently returned to the college. Uh, I had been at the college for 11 years and left in 2009, I believe it was, and now I'm back. So I'm happy to be back, happy that the college has me back, and it's great to see the community faces that I had worked with before and to be doing what needs to be done, and that is making this jewel shine again. We talked about that. Making this jewel of East County shine again. Again, thank you very much for being with us and uh, answering all these questions. And uh, it sounds like we're going to be on the right track, and we have a college here to be very, very proud of. Thank you. Thank you.